Jerry at Fair Oaks. Another glass of water, please, Jerry. Oh, good night. I certainly wish another cadet would come to Fair Oaks and sit at this stable so he could be water corporal. <laughs> but there isn't another new cadet at Fair Oaks, so you're still the water corporal. Ah, you're telling me. Cadet Phillips, here's your water. I don't make it last for the rest of the meal, will you? <laughs> this meat makes me thirsty. You shouldn't eat meat. Yeah, I wonder what Captain Bogart and Major Davis are so busy about at the staff table. Mm, I don't know. They've been laughing and talking all through the meal. I saw them figuring something out on paper a minute ago. Then Captain Bogart started to count all the cadets here in Mass. Maybe somebody's missing. Uh, you would think of something like that. <laughs> no, I don't think it's anything like that. They wouldn't be laughing about it. Mm, Sherlock Dogan, huh? Okay, what's your guess? I don't know. I guess I haven't got a guess. Say, look at Red Morrison eating by himself. Yeah. You know, Jerry, I feel kind of sorry for Red. The chill's been put on him now ever since he played that mean trick. Boy, I know just how he feels then. I had the chill on me once, and believe me, it's no fun. Gee, we've almost forgotten about poor Harold. Hmm. Seems funny to have his place vacant at the table. Poor kid. Well, we'll go up to our room after study hall and see if we can get anything about his father on the 8 o'clock news. Uh-huh. I... Men, say shut. Thank you. Men, Major Davis and I have a surprise for all of you. A surprise? Oh, yes, yes, surprise. You know that uh, here at Fair Oaks, it's not all work and no play. So we've decided to inaugurate something new and different. A treasure hunt. Treasure hunt? Mm, sounds swell. <laughs> Leave it to Captain Bogart to think of something great. He's always doing that. Now, uh, we want this treasure hunt to be a lot of fun. And at the same time, be a lesson in tactical maneuvering. If that sounds a little complicated, I assure you it'll be just as much fun. Perhaps a thrill for those of you who have never engaged in one. Major Davis and I have a list of all the cadets at Fair Oaks. Some of you have been picked for various teams. Athletic teams, I mean. And some of you haven't, through no fault of your own, of course. We've decided that this treasure hunt will be something everyone may engage in. From the newest plebes to the seniors. <laughs> Major Davis and I have divided the entire academy into two groups. Each group composed of both upper and lower classmen. One team will be headed by Cadet Captain Lockhart and the other by Cadet Captain Radford. Now, uh, as to the rules of the treasure hunt, they will be given to your captains after mass is dismissed. The names of the men on the two teams will be posted on the bulletin board immediately. That's about all I can say about the event now, but I can promise you a lot of fun and more than a fair share of thrills and excitement. There will be no study hall this evening due to the fact that the staff officers will be formulating the rules of the treasure hunt. Oh, boy! <laughs> Each cadet, however, is expected to stay within bounds and study in his own room. Now stand at attention for the singing of our alma mater. <laughs>
hurry to the bulletin board and see which team we're on. Yeah. Well, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, did you ever go on a treasure hunt, Jerry? Uh-uh. What's it like, Lee? Well, the two teams try to get to the place where the treasure's hidden. Uh, you try to capture men from the opposing team, and you've got to dig out clues as to where the treasure's hidden. Well, gosh, the thing might be any place. No, no, it's always within a certain boundary. No, I get it. Well, come on, let's get to the bulletin board before the whole school has the same idea. <laughs> Take it easy. The whole school has the same idea already. Everyone's going to the board. He, uh, does Captain Bogart always think up swell ideas like, like this? Yeah. He's a sort of game director. And they're not just kids' games, either. Some of them are pretty tough to play. <laughs> you can bet your uniform that when Captain Bogart says there'll be excitement and thrills, there will be. <laughs> Guess there won't be much work then tomorrow. Everybody will be so excited. I don't kid yourself about that, either. There won't be all play and no work tomorrow. Hey, look at the mob around the bulletin board. Yeah, There's it's like we'll have to push our way through. Hey, see if you can get a look over the heads of the others. Nope, nope, can't do it. We'll have to push closer. Hey, here, this way. We can see from here. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see now. Hey, look, they made uh, the two teams, the blue team and the gold team. Say, we're liable to be placed on different teams. I hope not. Uh, I can't see my name yet. Well, here's mine on the gold team. You see yours yet? No, let's see. Manners, Burling, Stimson. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Oh. Dugan, Cadet Jerry Dugan. Well, which team, the blue or the gold? Oh, hot dog, I'm on the gold team, too. Oh, swell. You know, that's a good thing for you, Jerry, uh, having me on the same team you're on. I mean, I know you like to win, so I'd hate to have you have a good man like I am on the other team. Huh. You're not conceited by any chance, are you? <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> hey, hey, we almost forgot. The news broadcast. Oh, that is until 8 o'clock. Well, we'll catch the earlier one. Come on, let's step on it. Okay, let's go. Hey, look. There's Red Morrison over there talking with Captain Bogart. Man, how? He looks like he's got a lot to say. Yeah, he seems to be pretty earnest about it. Boy, it must be awful tough to have to stick in quarters all the time, never allowed off the grounds, and never taking part in anything at all. Mm-hmm. Just like solitary confinement. But he had it coming to him. Yeah, well, I can feel sorry for him. Oh, sure, I can too, for that matter. Hey, and... Lee, Jerry, wait for me, will you? Oh, oh hi, Hello, Tubby. Tubby. Didn't think you'd be able to run that fast after putting away all that food. My appetite is barely satisfied, gentlemen. Barely satisfied. <laughs> you see, I burn up a lot of energy during the day, and I have to do something to put it back. <laughs> Seems to me you burn a lot of it eating like you do. <laughs> you know, I saw a steam shovel once that didn't have anything on you. It had everything I had but brains. <laughs> Jerry, did you say something about me being conceited? Oh, Tubby takes the trophy. <laughs> Not conceit, gentlemen. Just self-confidence. <laughs> oh, <laughs> an answer for everything. That's the truth. Speaking of brains, you two fellas are certainly lucky. Well, what are you talking about now? Well, uh, <clears throat> you're going to have the honor of having me on the same team. Ooh. I'm on the gold one, too. Well, well. Say, Lee. Do you think there's any way we could change to the blue team? Well, we'll speak to Major Davis. Is that so? I'll have you know that I'm known in some circles as the boy Napoleon, the little wonder of the field. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> captain Lockhart's our captain. They just posted it. Oh, boy, that's swell. Say, I wonder what the bounds of the hunt will be. <laughs> They've certainly got enough room to make the boundaries big enough. They might put the treasure out on Woodman's Island. Say, that's a good idea. Oh, wait a minute. You'd have every cadet in the school trying to get hold of a boat. Then there'd be plenty of wet uniforms and a lot of cold. Nope, I don't think they'll put it on the lake. Well, I'll bet it's near the lake. Captain Bogart promised us some excitement and thrills, and going along that lake shore at night is my idea of excitement. Yeah, mine too. Gee, it'll be pretty dark, won't it? Oh, there'll be a moon. There's one tonight. Moonlight isn't very bright, is it? Well, sometimes it's so thin you can't see by it. Say, Lee, don't uh, all the little animals, bats and things, don't they come out at night? Oh, yeah, the woods around here are full of them. B bats? Sure. Along the sh lake shore. Uh, you know, I got five of demerits again today for chewing gum. Maybe I'd better stay in tomorrow night and work them all. Oh, no, Tubby. You know, I'm, I'm sure we wouldn't want a little Napoleon to miss all the fun. Oh, of course not. One of the teams has got to have brains. Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fellas. Oh, we're just kidding you, Tubby. Sure, don't worry about the bats. <laughs> Who's worrying about bats? I'm worrying about the fight to marriage. <laughs> For the first time in your life. Yeah. Come on with us, Tubby. We're going to our room to listen to the news. Mm -hmm. We thought we might be able to hear something about Harold's dad. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll go along. Say, uh, what do you think will happen to him? Well, we don't know, Tubby. Nothing, we hope. Well, here we are. Get the light, Jerry. Okay. I'll turn the radio on. Just about time for the news, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's just about time for it. Oh, he's off again. Hey, listen, if you're going to do nothing but sneeze, we'll run you out. Whoops. Sorry. You always have to... Today, the count stood ten to one. Meanwhile, a government inquiry board went ahead with their investigation of the crash of the huge bomber which was being tested by Guy Linwell. Hospital doctors reported Linwell's condition as still serious, but that the famous test pilot was definitely out of danger. Questioning of Linwell by the Board of Inquiry has been postponed until the pilot is well enough to attend the board's meetings, which may be a month. And today, in financial circles... Oh, I guess circles, that's all about Harold's dad. Gee, on the... why are they going to question Harold's dad? Well, it's hard telling, Tubby. They must have found something. Yeah, they sure don't hold those board inquiries for nothing. Uh-huh. You know... Uh... Uh-oh, company. Who could be calling at this hour of the night? No, I'll get it, Lee. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, we thought it was company, but it's rap. Hold it, Tubby. Uh, come on in, Red. Thanks. You won't get in trouble by letting me in. I I got permission to apologize to you, Jerry. Yeah. Oh, that's all right, Red. It isn't all right. I guess I made a pretty good fool of myself. No, you didn't. You were before. Keep still, Tubby. Hmm. Well, let him go on. I guess I made enough dirty cracks to get some back. Well, uh, uh sit down, Red. Thanks. Uh, 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 what do you think of the treasure hunt, Red? Well, great idea. You fellas should have a lot of fun. Sure, we aim to. I, um, I asked Colt and Captain Bogart whether I could go. Yeah? Oh, well, what'd he say? What do you think he said? I can't go. I'll be the only cadet here at Fair Oaks. The rest of you will be out having a good time. Uh, well, after all, Red, it, it's only a treasure hunt, I mean... <laughs> But what a treasure hunt. Mm, oh, gee, boy. Tubby, cut it out. Uh, you want some candy, Red? No, thanks. Well, I'll be running along now. I just dropped by to apologize to you, Jerry. I guess I caused you a lot of trouble. You're a good detective, Lee. Well, I'd have done the same thing for you, Red, if I thought you weren't guilty. I guess you would. Well, have a good time tomorrow night. Night. Well, I'm going to do something about it. Gee, what do you mean by that? I... I don't know, but... Gee, it sure sounded like he meant it. <laughs> 